Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up and connect your Dreo Smart pedestal fan with the Dreo app that's available for iOS and Android devices. So if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Looking at the box, you'll actually notice if you still have it that they have a QR code you can scan right here to take you to the app store. Again, this is a free app available for iOS and Android devices. So the first thing you have to do is go ahead, search your app store, download the Dreo app, and we'll get this set up. All right, so we have our fan connected right here. It's plugged in. We haven't powered it on though. And we have the Dreo app up. Yours will look similar. We do have a device already added, but it's currently disconnected as you see. So you need to choose the big blue plus button in the center or in the top right hand corner to add a device. This is gonna scan for nearby devices. We have multiple to choose from, but we wanna choose the fan. So pick by image or name. So it's the poly fan. Now take the horizontal oscillation button Hold that down for five seconds for your Wi-Fi. You might hear a beep and a chime. If you do, you'll see a little orange blinking light. That means you're good to go. So in this case, connect to your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Only 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks are supported. Select connect. Now it's gonna work on connecting to your device. It'll go through a couple of settings and that will be it. Ironically, while filming this video, I was having connection issues, so every time I tried to register the device, it would say that it failed. It takes you to a screen where basically you can retry your network information. In the process of doing that multiple times, I was like, well, maybe it's actually not close enough to the router because this is about the furthest away from the router you can be. So I had not initiated it again, just picked it up and set it right here on the table, and then it magically worked. Didn't do anything else, it just jumped right to the next screen where you could name your device and hit OK. And after that, we're now here. So I wanted to show you the full thing. It should take like 30 seconds. It'll go um, connect to your network, register device. There might be like an IoT thing, at least from other similar fans. Then it goes to the screen. You may or may not see that. If you're having connection issues, just fight through it like I did. Try to move your fan closer. Just try it a couple of times and you might be pleasantly surprised. It might just work and add the device even though it thinks that it failed. So I'd love to offer you more advice there because that's the whole point of this video, but setup should be easy. But if you're encountering issues, just stick with it a couple of times. Obviously double check your password. If you can move it closer to your router, do that as well. But don't give up if you're having trouble. So this is now what's gonna look like to view the fan. We have a couple of quick options here where we can set a timer to turn on all the way up to basically 11 hours and 59 minutes. We can quickly turn it on right here. We can view our temperature. So that'll load right there for you. 73 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know why there's nothing there, but it should just say 73. Then we have our device settings where we can rename it. We can share this device with friends or family. Just ignore that air message too. I don't know why that shows up too. So their app definitely needs some work, has some glitches here. Wi-Fi info, firmware update, everything's already up to date. User guide and manual, FAQ section, voice control with Amazon and Google Assistant. If you want to link your account, you can also delete your device. Let's go back here. There's the temperature thing. So you'll see that. We looked at the settings. Let's go and quickly turn it on. You'll see that it starts up right away. We have our one down here too. You might not be able to see that, but that does light up ever so faintly. Shows you the oscillation degree and our Wi-Fi status. So we can either click on this or we can click on the image. Takes us to the same thing where we have the power button again, our different modes, normal auto sleep, natural, turbo, custom, you get the idea. Pick and choose which mode you want. So here's standard, then we have turbo, then we have our custom settings. So you can learn more about it if you want, but basically you can use it in, you know, parity with your AC and pick and choose, you know, what the temperature is and where you want the fan speed to be. So I like that, that's pretty cool. If you wanna sync it up that way with your house, or you can choose a daily routine, right? Choose your time, what fan speed setting you want it at. So scheduling, two different ways. The AC scheduling is pretty cool. Let's go back to standard though. We have our normal setting. We have natural, we have sleep and auto. I'm gonna bring this back down. So one's gonna be our lowest. Don't forget about turbo, but if you wanna go up slider wise, it's gonna to go to eight or anywhere in between. 
And then further down, you'll see we have oscillation settings. So let's tap that icon there. You can learn more about it if you want to um, read up on it. But basically, we have two different options, horizontal and vertical oscillation. Both are supported. And yes, both can be done at the exact same time. So look at the fan behind me. It's going to be oscillating 90 degrees horizontally and 105 degrees vertically. You can customize that further though. So 30 to 120 for our horizontal settings. And then for a vertical 45 to 105 or anywhere in between. And we can turn both of those off. And I thought we'd actually have the ability to place it where we want. We do not have that, at least right now, with this particular fan. Some of their other fans have the ability where you can basically drag and drop where you want it there. But in this case, just choose some of those presets and you're good to go. Next, we have our panel sounds on or off, display auto off, child lock, calibration settings, temperature unit settings. All of that's right there within the app. So a lot of custom controls. Really the key and kicker is this really cool double oscillation.